Greetings and salutations, loyal viewers of this channel. My name is Sean, and today we got to talk about an absolutely hilarious story out of New York City, because it turns out that all that talk about migrants being welcome, about the evil orange man's immigration policy being due to evil white racism, and how we want these asylum seekers here in the city turned out to be worth nothing because now they are ramping up efforts to give migrants tickets so that they can leave the city. Now, for those of you who are unaware of the history of New York City, New York City for a long time, like many liberal cities in this country, had something called sanctuary city status, which basically limited the ability of law enforcement to work with ICE or INS before that in order to deport people when they get arrested or when they interact with law enforcement. Now, there are some solid arguments for for this in limited circumstances, like you want people who are the victims of crimes to report crimes and all that. However, this policy was ramped up to the nth degree under Bill de Blasio's administration when he signed an extra law in order to prevent the NYPD from coordinating with ICE in any manner, meaning if you had a serial killer that needed to be deported, the NYPD was legally forbidden from doing so. It was insane, but of course, this was done during the fever of the Orange Man's administration where they had to combat absolutely everything related to Trump and they had to declare all of his policies to be rooted in evil white racism. There's actually a hilarious tweet and even though it says Eric Adams on the account, understand this was before he was the mayor of New York City, that reads as follows from 2017. We've always welcomed immigrants in New York City. Nothing about that is going to change and by the way, they have a thing where you're applying for US citizenship at the library. That's what they're tweeting. Out. Now, when migrants actually took that message seriously, when they actually started coming to the city of New York, when they started getting shipped here by the governor of Texas and other border governors, all of a sudden this completely changed to now we're going to give you a ticket to go anywhere, wherever you want to go, as long as it's not here, because that's the official position of the mayor of the city of New York, because they realize that they cannot deal with the cost of housing these people. Now, we're going to get into this in great detail. But before we do, this video is sponsored, so let's toss it to the sponsor, but come back over here and we'll talk about it on the other side. Did you know that poor sleep can cause weight gain, poor mental health, mood swings, and a loss of productivity? And trust me, I know what this is like firsthand because late into the evening, I'm on this device right here editing up these videos for you. And guess what? It's really difficult for me to turn my brain off in order to get a good night's sleep. Well, at least that used to be true before I got Beam Dreams wonderful hot cocoa powder with no added sugar, by the way, that helps you fall asleep quicker and stay asleep longer. Beam Dream comes in a variety of flavors. My absolute favorite right now definitely has to be the cinnamon cocoa powder. That's my go-to in the evening. One scoop in hot milk for me, but you can use hot water. Mix it up and it's absolutely delicious. However, there are other flavors that might pique your interest, like the salted caramel, or next up on my list to try, which of course is the chocolate peanut butter that I have right here. Now, if you want to try any of the wonderful flavors offered by Beam, guess what? You're in luck because their biggest sale of the year starts November 1st, where you will be able to get 50% off anything on their website. But I got news for you. If you're out there in my audience and you go to shopbeam.com slash justice warrior and enter the code cyber, you get access to the sale two days before anyone else. It's a hookup from Beam to me to you guys out there in the audience, and it's absolutely wonderful. Look, since I started drinking Beam, I wake up more refreshed, I have quicker reaction time, and much less stress in my life. But don't just take my word for it. A clinical study showed that 93% of the people who started drinking one of these hot cocoa powders reported better long-lasting sleep. And again, you can get it for 50% off, biggest sale of the year. Use code CYBER to access it early at shopbeam.com slash justicewarrior. That's shopbeam.com slash justice warrior or just scan the QR code. Now to be clear, the whole entire point of the policy of Greg Abbott of shipping migrants to left-wing cities was due to the fact that these people said that they wanted these migrants. Some of them actually passed extra laws in order to protect migrants and Greg Abbott said, listen, I deal with this problem each and every year. You guys don't say it's a real issue. You pretend it away. So now I'm going to bring that issue to your doorstep. So you have to look at 
into the face, and so you have to live up to your own values. However, it is actually pretty overestimated how many migrants are in New York City due to the fact that the Texas governor is shipping migrants over here or to Chicago or towards any other left-wing city. Comparatively to the amount of people that are here, this is actually a relatively small program. In fact, one of the most hilarious parts about all this is that one of the number one authors of New York City's peril in terms of a politician actively shipping people to New York City is actually the mayor of El Paso, a Democrat, who is sending people there because even though he likes to pretend to be this left-wing progressive, he understands the realities of running a city that is flooded with migrants. So the dominant narrative so far had been, oh, Texas Governor Greg Abbott is the one who's busing all of these people or sending all of these people to New York City. But he actually accounts for a small fraction of the migrants who have arrived in New York City. So I wanna take you to graphic five here, because as the New York Times reports, after crossing the southern border, thousands have made their way to New York with the help of officials in Texas. Governor Greg Abbott has sent thousands in a campaign to provoke outrage and force the federal government to tighten border security. So he has done that to an extent. However, Abbott's buses account for only a small fraction of the people who have arrived. El Paso, a Democrat-led city, has also sent new arrivals to New York at the migrants' request. Officials there have said, and some people have made their own way. So he's actually more responsible, comparatively, for sending migrants to New York City or to Chicago than Greg Abbott is as a whole. Greg Abbott's program gets a lot of attention, but again, it's only a small portion of it. And even comparatively, the El Paso program is also a small portion of it. The bulk of the migrants that have shown up in New York City have specifically requested to come to the city of New York, which is something that not a lot of media outlets will tell you. And that's because the reason why they're requesting to come to the city of New York or to Chicago is because we have an idiotic policy that of course backfired that sounded really good when it was first presented which is a right to shelter which means if you go up to a New York City official and there are very many places where this can happen across the city of New York and you say you want somewhere to sleep for a night they are obligated to serve you that they're obligated to provide that for you and because of that magnet migrants have been drawn into the city of New York so it's a left-wing policy that supposedly was going to of homeless people that is now being used to serve people who aren't residents of this city, aren't residents of this country, are actually here illegally abusing the asylum system while homeless people still languish on the street. And so what they're now dealing with is, okay, New York City specifically is a has a right to shelter policy, meaning anyone who asks for shelter must get the shelter, which has actually made New York a far more desirable place for these migrants to go to. And by the way, it's led to absolutely disastrous results. We've covered on this channel what is going on in Staten Island, where they tried to house these people in a school, and the Staten Island residents rebelled against that. But the thing is, even with that shelter in place, even with all the normal shelters in place, New York City is still running out of room for these people. It recently came out that one of the shelters that they had people in didn't even stand up to the scrutiny of fire codes. In fact, they had to hire people to act as human fire alarms in these shelters, and eventually it ended up getting shut down because it was so dangerous. The Toro College migrant shelter shut down for safety reasons. The mayor says the city is nearly out of room for the 4,500 migrants now arriving weekly. He says his administration is now looking at outdoor spaces where tents and other temporary shelter could be set up. We are tapping into international uh, people and we're finding out what are our options. Because believe it or not, uh, you know, tents are costly also. The FDNY says the shelter at the former Toro College building was unsafe due to an absence of fire alarms. The mayor and his team say in their absence they had fire guards, individuals who were on fire watch duty. Now look, while this does look bad for Mayor Eric Adams, and these are subpar conditions for migrants, and it's embarrassing for a city that said that they could welcome and support all the migrants, I do want to point out that it is not just a New York City problem, and it's not just a recent problem. Border towns and 
Texas, with much less of a tax base, much less of a broad population, have been dealing with these issues for a very long time. The same is true of Arizona, New Mexico, and all the border states in this country. That is the whole point of shipping these people to these lefty areas, because the voters in those areas on a national level don't care about immigration as much, and the whole point is to make them care about immigration. I mean, think about it. If Mayor Adams wasn't dealing with this, he'd probably be more in line with Mayor Bill de Blasio in the fact that we need open borders and everybody's going to come here and is going to be the most welcoming thing ever. However, when faced with the consequences, Eric Adams has been keeping it real with his constituents. Never in my life have I had a problem that I did not see an ending to. I don't see an ending to this. I don't see an ending to this. This issue will destroy New York City. Destroy New York City. We're getting 10,000 migrants a month. One time we were just getting Venezuela. Now we're getting Ecuador. Now we're getting Russian speaking coming through Mexico. Now we're getting uh, Western Africa. Now we're getting people from all over the globe have made their minds up that they're gonna come through the southern part of the border and come into New York City. And everyone is saying it's New York City's problem. Every community in this city is going to be impacted. We got a $12 billion deficit that we're going to have to cut Every service in this city is going to be impacted. Now, while a lot of people want to laugh at Eric Adams or the voters of New York City, remember, this was the whole intent of the program. The whole reason why we're shipping people to all these different areas of the country, especially areas that vote for this at a national level, while pretending it's not a problem because they never see it, was so that they could see it, was so that they could experience the budget cuts, was so that they could have these problems on their doorstep to hopefully produce change. Now you have Eric Adams and Kathy Hochul going after President Biden. Now, I had said Eric Adams was the least bad candidate in the Democratic primary. That still holds true, so he was the most likely person to flip in this direction. But the thing is, we're seeing similar pressures on Brandon Johnson of Chicago, and while he hasn't broken yet, eventually he is going to break. He's already bending and already twisting in the wind now that his black base of support is going after him over this issue because Chicago is another area that is completely out of shelter space that has a disastrous situation which includes migrants camping in and around police stations in the city so now the police who have been defanged over there are basically doing a secondary job of welfare for migrants and that is the disaster that is going on in Chicago and even if Brandon Johnson holds strong guess what when he comes up for election and these people are still there chances are he's not going to get the support that he got previous and considering he won by razor thin margins by running an identity politics based campaign this leaves that office right for the taking and we can all point and laugh at him as he asked for this he embraced it he pretended that it was not a real thing but then all of a sudden it ended up leading to his demise now we have eric adams and his office sending migrants out of the country sending migrants to other states doing all the things that they said was bad when Greg Abbott was doing it and trying to ramp up efforts in order to get them out of the city of New York. They admit it's not ideal, but ask to keep the tough reality in perspective. What is it going to take before people understand what outer room means? Yes, we're placing people in conditions that are unfair for migrants and it's unfair for New York City taxpayers. We literally have 120,000 people that we are caring for. When we started the administration, that was 45,000. And I know that everybody knows that, but I think we have to keep on going back and saying to ourselves, how is it possible that we are still in this place? Now, of course, like all politicians, they're gonna say, hey, look, the problem is way worse. It has nothing to do with us. They're gonna try to shift blame away. But the thing is, they still have yet to change the laws that guarantee the right to shelter in the city of New York. They still have yet to get rid of the magnets to make them only applicable to citizens, even though citizens are the ones getting the short end of the stick, while illegal immigrants are getting all the benefits. The city officials say they are trying to reticket and encourage migrants to go elsewhere, but many choose to stay here where they get a package of benefits indefinitely. But that housing piece may be quickly coming to an end. And that news report really cuts to the heart of it, because what people don't know, what people don't want to tell you, is that this ticketing program to send people out of the city of New York has existed for a very long time. In fact, 
first reporting of Eric Adams trying to implement this strategy is actually eight months old. And by the way, the city of New York has been doing this with homeless people to such a point that the de Blasio administration got in trouble when the mayor of Newark called him out for busing homeless people over the border in order to get them out of the city of New York. Because all this progressive nonsense up top really doesn't matter once your constituents start feeling the effects of your ridiculous policies. However, the difference now is that Eric Adams has set up a whole office for this. He's trying to emphasize this, but the thing is, because they haven't gotten rid of the benefits, people don't want to leave. Why would you want to go to Arizona if you're not going to get the housing in a nice hotel, you're not going to get food, you're not going to get all the perks that are available in New York City? This is one of the reasons why we have to remove the perks that are available in New York City. We have to get rid of this right to shelter or at least make it only applicable to legal residents in the city of New York because what you want to do is deter people from coming here. This is one of the first names on the lips of migrants on where they want to go. And even though they like to pretend like Texas is coercing them and all that, the reality is that is not what's happening. The migrants want to come to New York City. Sometimes the governor of Texas's officials will tell these migrants that they get all these perks here. But the thing is, that's 100% true. That is what is available. That is what was instituted. And it's all fine and dandy to push all these progressive policies when you don't have to actually pay for them, where you never have to put your money where your mouth is well guess what new york city is being called out they are putting their money where their mouth is and they're realizing it's a lot of money to spend and they're now changing their tune and by the way this isn't something that i'm just calling out because i'm right wing or anything like that immigration has never been a huge issue on this channel that i've talked about But even Cenk Uger of the Young Turks has said that Abbott's policy makes 100% sense. And honestly, it's completely unfair for the federal government and for these left-wing politicians to say that they want these immigrants here, but only in states that aren't theirs, only in Texas, so that they have to pay the cost of those migrants. So look, I said this on day one. I'm going to repeat it even uh, with greater fervor today. Uh, I think that what Texas did makes sense. Uh, And so I know that a lot of people on the left don't wanna hear that, but think about it guys. So they had this immigration problem all along and it wasn't spread out to many different states. It was just in Texas and of course other border states. And uh, the federal government kept saying, I don't care, okay. Now to be fair, the federal government, it doesn't just quite say that. It has a lot of different uh, programs in place. The idea that there's open borders is nonsense. No, there's a border and they enforce it. They return people all the time, etc. But tons of people come in and the border states said, why? Why do we have to shoulder all of this by ourselves and started shipping it to other places that were more left wing and said they were more open to immigrants. So you're open to immigrants, here you go, here's immigrants. And now all of a sudden New York realizes, Okay, well, being open to immigrants has consequences, right? So yeah, I don't care where you are in the political spectrum. If you look at this issue honestly, if you look at it objectively, the Democrats should be paying the burden of the cost of their own policies. And it is not immoral, wrong, or somehow cruel for these migrants to be shipped to the places that publicly stated that they wanted them there and have citizens that vote on the national level for a candidate like Joe Biden who promised to let these people flood the border because that's exactly what is happening. They said that the Trump policy of remain in Mexico, which just means, by the way, that you have to apply in the countries that you pass through for asylum if you're going to claim asylum, was evil, white, and racist. Now that these people are here, now that they're skipping all these different destinations, they can either admit that they were wrong or pay the cost of those migrants. And guess what? They don't want to pay the cost of the migrants, and now they're going after Joe Biden. Kathy Hochul going after Joe Biden. Eric Adams going after Joe Biden because they know that Biden is not doing anything related to this problem. One of my favorite things that I heard is that Biden approved something like a billion dollars in order to deal with the migrants in all cities across the country. $1 $1 billion for every single city. 5% of New York City public services are going to be cut, and our budget is in and around $130 billion or $170 billion for the city of New York. And that doesn't even count the state-level costs in dealing with these migrants. Even Eric Adams says, we don't even know if we can afford to put these people up in tents because they're expensive. So yeah, while a lot of people will bring you the level zero analysis and just call this hypocrisy, in reality, in actuality, what you're seeing here 
is the distribution of migrants policy as advocated by Greg Abbott working perfectly. This is a well-executed plan, and we got to give credit where credit is due because Republicans don't often execute in this way. But hey, those are just my thoughts. I want to know what you guys think down in the comments below. If you like the video, show by leaving a like, subscribe for more content, follow me on my social media, support review the support links in the description of this video. This has been me talking about New York City having an absolute panic attack and sending migrants away. Till next time.